probably most of you here know someone who suffers from chronic pain. Uh, by chronic pain, I mean pain that lasts for several months. Can be lower back or joint inflammation or uh, pain after traumatic injury. I want you now to think for a moment about such a person. Do medications, painkillers, always remove their pain? If yes, they are in a lucky minority, as 64% of chronic pain patients are not satisfied with pills. Around the same percentage is worried about possible side effects of medications. No one yet has found an ideal solution for pain, but it is important to investigate all promising directions. And today I want to talk about one such promising avenue and tell you how far we man managed to walk down it. We are developing a virtual reality application that helps to treat pain. When I tell this to people, sometimes the reaction is, are you kidding me? You make people play games and you hope that their pain will go away. But in fact, the idea is not that strange as it may seem. Experience of pain is very strongly linked to attention. We feel less pain when our attention is moved away from it. When a child hurt themselves, sometimes it's enough to show them a new interesting toy to make them stop crying. And they stop because they forget about the pain and actually feel it less. This mechanism is called attention distraction, and various distraction methods were tried before VR, like listening to music or watching a video. The problem is that pain grabs our attention, and it's often not easy to move it away. So it, we need strong distraction methods, good enough to do the job. Let's now define what is virtual reality, and this will help us see why it may work. So virtual reality is a simulation of perception. It is simulation over multiple senses, so it is simulating a multisensory world which responds to users' actions. VR is usually linked to technology, most commonly head-mounted displays, wearable goggles, but also various other sensors and trackers which help to map physical movements of user body onto the movements of a virtual avatar body. Ideal virtual reality would be something like a lucid dream, or better yet, shared lucid dream but real technology is still quite far from there. This idea of virtual reality sometimes creates different kinds of reactions when I describe my work. Some people believe that we have found a holy grail, that we are able to teleport people into a virtual paradise and remove their pain there. So virtual reality really works for pain reduction, but it's not without its problems. I think at this conference it is appropriate to use the metaphor of magic. So we are still searching for a correct formula of magical spell of VR. Is it abracadabra or maybe hocus pocus? That is what exactly works when we use virtual reality to treat pain. Is it some specific content of virtual reality game? Or maybe rather the way people navigate the game, the interface. So much of our work is devoted to finding those exact mechanisms, ingredients of this magical potion. Let's now come to what we know about why virtual reality works. VR is considered to be a better form of distraction than other methods, like watching a video, and very likely this is because of immersive and interactive nature of virtual reality. That is, patients can actively participate in events in a virtual space, not just passively watch them on screen. Another feature of virtual reality is its ability to evoke the sense of presence, being there inside of a virtual space. And this feeling of presence is also considered to be an important part of uh, virtual reality pain reduction. First studies on uh, using VR to treat pain appeared at the end of the 90s, so over 15 years ago. Hunter Hoffman and his team at the University of Washington managed to successfully treat patients, patients with severe burn wounds. And pain related to such wounds can be extremely intense. Even strongest opioid-related drugs cannot fully control it. This first study was done on two teenagers who suffered gasoline burns. And they uh, reported that pain was twice less severe when they were distracted by virtual reality compared to no distraction and also that virtual reality was better than playing a console game. So this result was later, uh, later repeated on larger groups of burn patients and also on various other clinical populations and painful medical procedures like chemotherapy, uh, breast cancer, post-operative pain or dental care. So this main effect of virtual reality is well 
established now and repeated over many studies that people feel less pain when they are distracted by virtual reality compared to other distraction methods or no distraction. But what exactly creates this effect? Can we understand the subtleties of virtual reality pain alleviation to create even better, stronger working uh, interventions of our applications? And the way of answering those questions is through laboratory experiments. Because in the lab, we can systematically compare effectiveness of two virtual environments, which differ only regarding to one particular feature. And this way, we can discover if this particular feature is an important pa part of this whole process. In the lab, we can also control the intensity of pain stimulus, and then we can better measure pain reduction. And we can also ensure that all conditions stay the same throughout the entire experiment. All this is necessary if we want to gather reliable knowledge. So in our lab, we designed and conducted several such experiments, checking far how various aspects or features of virtual reality relate to experience of pain. And let me briefly describe you two of those experiments. In the first experiment, we checked how game complexity influences pain. Game complexity is the amount of elements meaningful for the gameplay, or amount of elements that the player has to attend to. So in this experiments, participants were playing uh, two variants of a simple game that we programmed. Uh, they were navigating 3D arrows in, in space and collecting spheres that were there. And this was low complexity variant. In a high complexity variant, they were doing exactly the same, but there were also additional bad red spheres in the scene, which were chasing the player and interfering with the task. So, as you can see, this is a very simple game and very simple manipulation. But just adding those red spheres was enough to make some difference in experience of pain and reduce pain. In this experiment, we used as a pain stimulus a procedure called cold pressure test. This is a commonly used method in experimental pain studies and it's considered a good approximation of chronic pain. We asked participants to put their hands in a container with a cold water and remove the hand when the pain will become difficult to stand. And we measured the time they keep their hand in the cold water and also their subjective rating of pain intensity. So what did we find? First of all, they were keeping their hands in the cold water much longer when they were distracted by virtual reality compared to a control condition when they were just staring at blank screen of the goggles. But much more importantly, they reported significantly smaller pain intensity after being distracted by high complexity game compared to low complexity game. So just adding those red spheres made the difference. And I think this is an important finding because it shows that we can design better games for pain reduction and that through systematic experimentation we can discover what works and what doesn't. So encouraged by this, we created another experiment where we checked how body movement or interface influences experience of pain. In this experiment, participants were playing exactly the same virtual reality game, but using two types of interface, either, either steering the game with a computer mouse or with a Microsoft Kinect with large whole arm movements. In this game, they were gliding through 3D space and collecting spheres while avoiding other spheres. So what did we find here? They were keeping their hands in the cold water much longer when they were navigating with Kinect compared to navigating with the computer mouse. So again, very simple change to how the game is being played uh, has significant impact on some aspects of experience of pain, in this case, pain tolerance. However, in this experiment, we didn't find a difference in subjective rating of pain intensity between those two interfaces and possibly because we asked participants to assess this pain intensity after they removed the goggles, so their attention was no longer distracted by virtual reality. And this brings us to an important conclusion and problem related to distraction as a sole and only mechanism of uh, virtual reality pain control. So the problem with distraction is that distraction works only when people are distracted, but one cannot wear VR goggles all the time. So, possibly that's why virtual reality was used most commonly to, use to treat acute pain. And only recently there were some applications or attempts at using virtual reality also to treat ch chronic pain. But this is much more challenging and difficult. We cannot rely just on distraction. 
So what else can we do? How else can we use VR? Uh, one possible way is through enhancing pain control, subjective feeling that we possess some degree of control over pain. And this was recently done uh, by Loreto Quijada and uh, her team from University of Barcelona, where researchers created computer-generated representation of pain, uh, which could be manipulated by the participants to achieve representation of relief. And it uh, turns out that it actually worked and that this type of pain control, uh, manipulating representation of pain, can be useful alternative to distraction, possibly better for chronic pain treatment. So let me now uh, quickly describe you the game that we are creating at the moment, wh where we try to combine effects of distraction, pain control, and helping others in virtual reality. In this game, players will become wizards or healers, and their task will be to collect magical power-ups to build a spell. When they will build the spell, they will be able to cast it to remove pain or suffering from game characters, which they will be encountering in a virtual space. So this is suffering, game character, and relief. So this, uh, this game will have two aspects. Uh, th there will be an arca arcade part, where we want to engage attention in an optimal way, using our experiences from the lab. For example, game, game difficulty will dynamically adapt to player's performance. And also, there will be pain control part, where we want the players to feel that through their effort and skill, uh, they can acquire power to control pain and help others. So, to sum up, what needs to be done if we want to move on with understanding how to use virtual reality to treat pain? First of all, we need to understand how those two mechanisms, uh, distraction and pain control, uh, interact. Can they be combined into one virtual reality application? Uh, are there any problems with such integration? Do their effects multiply, sum up, or maybe cancel each other? And if there are any problems, can those problem problems be overcame? So as you can see, uh, there is a lot of work to be done, both in terms of research and creating fun and engaging virtual reality application. And in this place, I would like to say thank you to all people that helped with this project so far, uh, volunteers, programmers, research participants. Uh, if we succeed with understanding how to use virtual reality to treat pain, we will be able to offer people better tools to control their pain and help them suffer less. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Martin. Uh, could you please tell me how do people with chronic pain actually react to virtual reality? Do they like it? Are they afraid of it? Or what's the case? What do they say? First of all, they are not afraid of it. Uh, we tried VR with people of all ages, uh, starting with children up to very old people, like 85 or, or, or more, and they they can use it. They mostly enjoy it, but there is a certain group that cannot tolerate virtual reality as it is now. There are still certain problems like simulator sickness, and uh, this is still research, not a ready solution that can be like, used now. Okay. Thank you very much. Marcin Chop.